Are you familiar with this situation when you are doing exterior visualizations and you need various of plants models, but you have only one or two from each type? I have a great solution for this, so stay with me until the end. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Aga and I'm a CG artist. And on this channel, we explore techniques and tools that will help you become a better artist. Today, I will show you how to create multiple plants from just one model. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, so you won't miss any future tutorials. Okay, so let's jump straight to 3ds Max. Okay, so I have imported a palm model into a new 3ds Max file. It's a Mexican fall palm from Globe Plants. I have some really good news. I have a discount from Globe Plant for you. With the code AVA5, you will get minus 5% off for any purchases. I put the link to this particular model in the description below, but I highly recommend to check out other models as they are really good quality and have really good materials. On their website, you will be able to choose different formats. In this tutorial, we'll use the GrowFX file. Now, to be able to open it, you will need to have the GrowFX plugin installed. I put the link in the description below to it as well. So here is how it looks. So as our GrowFX file, we have different paths that refer to different parts of the model. The naming is pretty straightforward here. For example, leaves dry or trunk. So you can easily find yourself in this file. To create different variations of the same model, we can start from changing parameters of direction modifiers. Let me turn off these modifiers for a sec. So here, we can change the length path, let's say for 7 meters. You can see that it's automatically changing. Now we can open the Mesh Builders options. Let's open the graph. So this is a graph that sets the radius of the trunk in relation to the trunk length. We could change it manually, but there is no need for this. We can control this thickness of the trunk by using the scale factor. The bigger the value, the thicker the trunk. We can set it to some lower values, for example 18, maybe 19. Okay, we can turn it off. Now we can add our own modifiers. Click here and choose Vector Direction. It doesn't look good, but don't worry, I will show you what to do. Choose another global vector and click Create. You need to click somewhere in the viewport to create it. Here we go. We can of course change it. First of all, let's change a vector size to be smaller. Awesome. And now, let's change the direction by rotating it. You can see that it's a bit laggy, so you can turn off the tree, rotate the vector, and turn it back on. Now we can control the strength. Now it's working in the opposite direction, so let's delete the minus. Plus, it's quite strong, so let's decrease it. Here we go, we're getting there. What is cool with this kind of models? When you edit them, everything else will follow. Look for example at the palm leaves, they are facing down. We can use graphs to have more control. So this point is the start of the graph, and the end of the trunk is the end of the graph. If we click on the point and change a value here, the graph will automatically change. So the value 0 makes it completely straight. So let's change the position of the starting point. Let's try something smaller, one, so you can see that it affects how the tree is bent. Now if we type value for example minus one, look how the tree is bent. It creates a sort of S shape. I'd like to modify this palm more, let me show you what else we can do. Click here to make it easier to make adjustments. To add points, we can use this option. Let's add points in three places. Now I'll edit their position, so let's say for this one, let's move it up, and this one, let's move to the zero level as well. And the last one, I'd like to be in the same position as the first point, so one. 
if I increase the value of the scale factor, it will be easier to see how it affected the trunk. Let's make a couple of more adjustments. So we can notice that we can do actually everything with this model by simply editing this graph. Okay, as you are happy with the shape of the trunk, we need to change the corners to be more smooth. Right click and choose Bezier Smooth. You can see that it creates much more natural results. We can also change the end point for the bezier corner and adjust the top part of the palm. Cool, we can close the graph. I think it will be better if we'll make it slightly longer. Now, we can turn on the random direction modifier. Okay, so we can see that it's slightly bent in another direction. I think it's too much here. Let's do max angle equal to. Let me show you the result. I think it will be cool to add a noise direction as well. Let's try it. Okay, let me change some values so we can see what is changing. Scale. It works similarly to the noise map in 3ds Max. Look at the trunk, it's really noisy now. But we can also control strength here. Let's decrease the value. I increase the scale. Nice. Let me show you before and after. Okay, now let's copy the palm tree and let's edit some options to create different palm from the same model. Let's go to the vector direction and let's decrease the scale. Even more. Okay, that's it. Let's copy it again. Okay, so we have four totally different palms from the same model. We're not finished yet. The best is yet to come. This sort of techniques you can learn during our advanced exterior visualization course. So if you found it interesting, you'll definitely want to check it out on our website. I put the link in the corner and in the description below. Ah, I almost forgot. Uh, this particular plant with graphics version from Glowplan will be the part of the bonuses you will get with the course. Great, isn't it? Okay, with that being said, I can show you one more trick. So we can change the seed number, so it will automatically randomize the result. So it creates different variations of the tree based on the parameters you used. Awesome, isn't it? But how can we use it? We can animate it. Let me show you. So select the palm model and turn on the auto key option. Click go to the end and click new. Turn off auto key option. Let's isolate this model for a moment to make a viewport faster. Thanks to the method we use, we have different variations of the same model animation. So by moving the slider, you can see various results. We created 100 variations from one model. Awesome, isn't it? Now unhide all and let's do the same for others. So auto key, go to the end, click new and the same for another one. Turn off the auto key as you finish. Nice. But you may wonder, why do we even need animated trees in the visualizations? It doesn't have any sense. It does, believe me. I will show you a great method to use it. Create a plane and we'll use forest pack. If you don't have forest pack, I put the link to this plugin in the description below, so definitely it's worth checking out if you think seriously about creating visualizations. It's one of the top plugins you should have. Anyway, create a forest pack, go to the geometry panel and add the first palm trees to it. Now, go to the distribution and increase the units to have a normal number of trees. And now the true magic will happen. Go to the animation panel Change the option to random samples. Time offset should be set to 1, so it will take the model from each keyframe. Let me show you the magic. I'll turn on and off this option. We can choose the number of palm trees used, so we can increase this value. However, remember, the higher the value, 
the more memory is used and everything gets slower as it needs to load more models. Let me quickly render it for you. Let's disable it for a moment. I'll add the sun. Let's adjust the tone mapping a bit. I will copy the preview so we can compare results. Stop render for a sec and turn on random samples in the animation panel. And let's render. So we can see that we have more variations. We don't have every tree looking similar and with the same height. Let's add other trees. Unhide all and let's add them. We can already see that the forest pack changed, but let's render it. So we can see that now it looks totally randomized from every position. We can of course edit forest pack more, for example by changing transform settings. We can definitely add scale. I'd like to add rotation as well. Let's say from minus 10 to 10. And of course, I would enable the translation as well. Let's adjust some values. And here we go. So how do you like this trick? Let me know in the comments. If you found it useful and you want to learn more techniques like this, I'd like to invite you to check out our advanced exterior visualization course where we teach you advanced techniques of creating materials, uh, creating nature scenarios, creating different seasons, setting up the camera according to the composition routes, using post-production to add atmosphere, creating different lighting scenarios, using fog and volumetrics, using forest pack and rare clone, editing plants with graphics, and much, much more. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye-bye!